and King Finwe, taking Miriel to be his wife, shared a love beyond the concept of love as they dwelled in the land of Eldamar in Tirion. Upon the crown of Tuna, the city of the elves was built, the white walls and terraces of Tirion and the highest of the towers of that city was the Tower of Ingwe, Mindon el Dalieva, whose silver lamps shone far out into the mists of the sea. Few are the ships of mortal men that have seen its slender beam. In Tirion, upon Tuna, the Vanyar and the Noldor dwelt long in fellowship, and Yavanna knowing the endless love the Eldar had for the graceful white of Telperion, made for them a sister tree that would cast such fairness, and while it bore no light, was just as beautiful in countenance. And it was named Galathilion. She lay its roots in the courts below the tower of Mindon, and it would flourish and from it would be born many seedlings that spread across Eldamar. Of these, one was afterwards planted in tall Eresea, and it prospered there, and was named Caliborn. Hence came, in the fullness of time, as is elsewhere told, Nimloth, the White Tree of Numenor. And the Eldamar were most beloved by the Valar. Magni and Varda loved most the Vanyar, the fair elves, but the Noldor were most beloved of Auli, and he and his people came often among them. Great became their knowledge and their skill, yet even greater was their thirst for more knowledge, and in many things they soon surpassed their teachers. The Noldor most loved the word and sought to change their speech to create sounds in form that would most fitting of their image. Seeking thus, new words and names were born. countless numbers and devising new tools which shaped them in fashion so pleasing, which they gave freely to all of the Valar, making all richer in splendor and beauty. And as time passed, the Vanyar grew to love most of the land where dwelled the Valar, and to feel the emergent light of the two trees. They would forsake the walls of Tyrion, and leaving Tuna, choose to dwell on the mountains of Mani. Or to roam the woods and plains of Valinor. But the Noldor 
still bearing fondness for the freedoms of Middle Earth and the gaze of the stars, remain in Kalakiria and in the hills and valleys within sound of the Western Sea. And with the Vanyar sundered, Finway was king in Turin and Olway in Alcalonde. But Inway was ever held a high king of all the elves. He abode thereafter at the feet of Manuel, upon Pantheon. Time passed with great swiftness as the Eldar grew fair and stately in body and mind, and in knowledges so wise that they surpassed any forethought of what could be devised. And they labored in joy and content. Then, from the ruminations of word and sound, came the thoughts of letters and lore, and one amongst them would be named Lore Master, who would labor to record their songs and signs from metal to stone, by brush or by pen. And most beloved in Tyrion was Finwë, who was king of the Noldor, and his wife was named Mirian. But the Vanyar called her Serindi, for her skill in weaving and needlework surpassed that of any other, her hands moving with grace and speed that would not be seen again. The love of Finwë and Miriel was great, beginning in the days of the Blessed Realm, in the days of bliss. In that time was born in the house of the king in Tirion, upon the crown of Tuna, the eldest of the sons of Finway and most beloved. Kuro Finway was his name, and by his mother he was called Feanor, spirit of fire. And thus he is remembered in all the tales of the Meldor. It was in the burying of her son, Kuro Fenwe, that many came to be consumed in mind and spirit, for the birth had rendered her weak and sorrowed in body. And Miriel would be filled with fatigue and lament, and being weary beyond comprehension, would yearn to be released from the toils of the body. And when she had named him, she said to him, Never again shall I bear a child. For strength that would have nourished the life of many has gone forth into vain. Never again 
Shall I be a child? Shall I be a child?